Hello fellow Haskellers! Uh, today I want to uh, show you a game that I've been working on uh, for several weeks already actually. Uh, I've been working on it like one hour per week. Uh, so this is like the 13th hour. Uh, is it? Uh, oh no, 15th hour <laughs> uh, I would be uh, I will be spending uh, on the game uh, and all, all of it uh, has been streamed but it has not been streamed to you necessarily uh, because this is uh, something I've been presenting uh, at work as part of our Haskell beginners session uh, where we teach whoever wants to learn Haskell at work uh, how to use Haskell uh, and so uh, since this was originally intended for uh, beginners I'm especially eager to hear your questions uh, even if uh, it's a question that has already been asked, even if uh, it seems like a very uh, beginner question. Uh, and in fact, let me uh, add a piece of text to the screen that uh, remind people to ask questions right on top of my face so you can't possibly miss it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, like I said, uh, it's a game. Uh, which game is it? Uh, it's not a game I came up with, although uh, I, I do occasionally come up with game ideas as part of game jams. Uh, this time, uh, the game is a re-implementation of uh, Baba Is You, a game I really enjoy and which you should buy. Uh, and it's a game whose gimmick is that uh, you can change the rules of the game uh, by manipulating objects inside of the game. So, uh, well, the, the, the real Baba Is You game doesn't look like this. Uh, it looks much better, <laughs> but this is what my version is, looks like. Uh, and I call it Giggles Is You, because Giggles is uh, one of our mascots at work. Uh, it's this blue robot. Uh, we call it the sad robot. So, it's, his name is Giggles. <laughs> uh, and the other one, the ghost, is called Sheets. Uh, and uh, currently, uh, I have set up the rules so that giggles is you and b is you. So when I press the right key, then uh, giggles is moving to the right, but also all of the b objects, uh, but not the b label. So uh, those labels, those pieces of text, uh, will eventually, <laughs> I haven't implemented that yet, uh, allow me to form uh, sentences such as giggles is you, and that will uh, add that rule to the game. Uh, so currently, uh, since it's not yet possible uh, to add rules to the game. Instead, I have this debug menu here when I can uh, type something like name is you giggles. That's the, the internal representation uh, of the rule giggles is you. And I add an exclamation mark in front to say that I don't want the rule to be uh, in the rule set anymore. So now when I move around, I only move the bees around. I don't move giggles because giggles is no longer the moving character. Uh, all right, so uh, the, since it's the, the first time I uh, stream uh, on my <laughs> uh, about this game on uh, my channel rather than uh, at work, since I stream to uh, possibly a bigger audience than usual, uh, although in the, all, all the probability it's only uh, <laughs> the people at work uh, who uh, are watching. Uh, I think it should be a good idea to uh, explain uh, why I chose to implement this particular game uh, in Haskell. And it's because uh, I was inspired after watching this presentation by uh, the creator of Baba Is You. And uh, in his presentation, he was saying that he was really struggling with the implementation of the rules. He had to uh, kind of duplicate the logic for uh, when you have a rule that is three words long, like Baba is you, or uh, five words long. Do we have an example of that later? Uh, yeah, like Baba on grass is you. Uh, we the, like to be able to treat Baba and Baba on grass uh, in the same way, uh, but due to the, the way in which he implemented the game, uh, that was hard. So I thought, oh, I take that uh, algebraic data types uh, in functional programming. Uh, would make that rather easy, and so uh, that's what inspired me uh, to check if it indeed is as easy as I thought. But uh, well, 
as I said, it's been 15 hours and I'm not done yet. So <laughs> I don't know how many uh, hours you put on that. Probably a lot more than 15, but uh, it's not trivial at least. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, let me show you the part where I define the rules. So currently there's only two kinds of rules uh, that so something is you and something is stop. Uh, but I think it would be uh, relatively easy in the future uh, if I want instead of a name to be able to have something like a compound expression where a compound expression compound expression could be something like a simple name like giggles or indeed a compound uh, like something on something like giggles on grass, right? Eventually, uh, we should be able uh, to support that. Uh, but for now, uh, we're just trying <laughs> slowly uh, to get to the state where we have uh, a game in which uh, we can push blocks around and form some rules. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's a, another part where I think that functional programming uh, is very well suited because Haskell is known to be very good at writing parsers. Uh, usually we parse characters, but uh, in this case we could be parsing a sequence of words from blocks into rules. I think that's another area where uh, I think it would be probably easier uh, in Haskell than in whatever language, probably like something like C, C sharp? I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> That is used actually implemented in. Uh, no, actually, he, he said it in the in that video. What was it? Was it R? I forget. It says so at the beginning. No, not important. <laughs> I, I'm implementing it in Haskell, uh, and I think it's uh, for real. Uh, so uh, I, I showed you. Uh, I don't think I want to save any changes. Okay. So I've shown you the state of the game so far. We can move around. We can use the bug commands to enable and disable uh, some rules. Uh, but uh, the next thing I want to add is some tests uh, because I just just before that I had I had implemented some tricky logic for what happens when you run into things. Uh, so for example, here if I move to the let's say to the left. Uh, here I am blocked by the edge of the wall. Uh, but if, uh, how could I engineer this? Uh, if I move left now, oop, no, nothing happens because nothing is stop. Uh, but if I make name is stop sheets. Uh, okay, so now if I try to move left, sheets will be an obstacle. And so I should not be able to move through. Oh, but now the behavior is different. Instead of being moved by, uh, instead of being stopped by the edge of the screen, I was stopped by an object, and uh, that that was a <laughs> different behavior just because uh, the way in which I, I coded those two cases uh, is from different parts of the code base. And so, uh, in one case, I am allowing the various uh, sprites, which are you to step on top of each other, and in the other case, I am not. Uh, so the desired behavior is that I do want them to stop on top of each other, unless uh, th those sprites are both you and stop. Uh, and so there's a bunch of like combinations, like if they are you, if they are not you. And uh, I've been testing things by uh, running the game and enabling and disabling some rules, but that has been pretty slow, and I'm also afraid of introducing regressions in the future. So that's why I want to add a test system and that's already what I did in uh, the last stream that you couldn't see unless you work with me. Uh, and uh, in it, like I didn't bother to like use uh, HPack or Tasty. I want to show everything from the ground up. Uh, so uh, I wrote my own uh, like miniature test framework. It's uh, not, nothing to write home about. Uh, it's just uh, I describe a test by some computation that has access to the world, uh, I should mention that I'm using Gloss. I should show you like the overall like, architecture. Uh, app main. So I'm using Gloss 
uh, tch -tch -tch. main function, I load the images that I need, I also uh, load a bunch of measurements for some characters, uh, like not characters in the video game sense, but like uh, characters which form a string, like giggles, G-I-G-G-L-E-S, uh, because when I draw this word to the screen, I need to know uh, like how many pixels it takes when I draw it at full size so that I can uh, scale it down and make it look uh, like it fits, make it fit within the box. That's why I need to know the size of all of the characters. Uh, well, all of the characters. There's a, there's a lot of Unicode characters. So currently I only support uh, ASCII characters, but uh, I've done it in a way where if I want to add a particular Unicode character, uh, the game will crash, but it will tell me which character I'm missing, and then uh, I can tweak, uh, load, char, chart. did I not? Generate all the tags. There you go. Uh, so here, I'm only doing it for characters uh, between, well, all, all of the printable ASCII characters, uh, but I could easily like add comma, some other number. Uh, come to think of it, I should probably do it like this. Map CHR. Am I... Yeah, I want to convert it to a character here so that, okay, now it will be much easier to add special characters like EAQ, for example, so that now uh, if I go back to, where did I, where did I define uh, how things are drawn? Uh, or rather, what is drawn in the level? It would be, I think, in assets no app assets uh, i have here a string representation of the world where uh, s is like special case to be sheets and g is special case to be giggles but every other letter is just that letter so if i just put an e acute in the middle of that level and run the game then we should be seeing a cell with an e acute right in the middle No, it crashed. So, um, wait, wait, wait. Maybe it needs to be a capital letter? Uh, let's see. So, so, that, so the reason I just did that, right, was uh, so that it would be easy to add a list of Unicode characters here. So I'm definitely adding E acute and capital E acute. Uh, and for each of them, I'm computing the width and I'm adding it to the char chart. So backslash 201, which is presumably E acute, should be in there. And it kind of is because it didn't crash, but also it didn't display anything. It's blank. Uh, could, could it be that the font, uh, which uh, comes with gloss, only supports ASCII characters? Oh, that would be a shame. Uh, yeah, I remember, yeah, in a, in a past game that I made using gloss, uh, in the credits, I wanted to write a game by Samuel Gino, and there's an E acute in my family name, uh, and I had to hack it by uh, drawing an E and then like drawing a line on top. So uh, yeah, I, I guess I won't be using any Unicode characters, uh, which means that uh, whatever I had here before was fine. Don't need to make it easier to add some. What did I check out? That main, it's char chart. There you go. Uh, okay, because I wanted to make it easier to write characters, but since I don't, I can keep the way that I wrote it here that is perhaps a bit clearer just because it's spread out over more lines. Okay, so 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I was showing you uh, the overall structure. I'm using glass. I'm first loading, uh, loading all of the resources which I need and then calling play, a function from glass that creates a window uh, with a particular background color, which is updated a certain number of times per second. That would be useful if I want to make animations, uh, like when moving the character from one cell to the other, it would be nice if I animated it to the next cell instead of just doop, jumping immediately. Uh, so, so I'll be able to do that at some point. I just haven't implemented it yet. Uh, and then this thing is a pure value uh, that represents uh, the state of everything that I want to draw on screen. And so it contains a world, but it also contains extra stuff. So uh, that's the extra stuff that is used for uh, my debugging command. Uh, when I type like exclamation mark, name is you giggles in order to no longer have giggles be a movable character. Uh, and I make this distinction between the UI, which contains the world and the world itself, uh, because uh, the world itself uh, is like purer than the UI. Uh, well, the UI is still a pure value, but uh, it's a value that is closely tied to uh, what I'm displaying uh, on the screen, uh, whereas the state of the world is a bit more abstract, and so I want to be writing my tests against the, only the state of the world and not the state of the UI. Not currently interested in testing that the UI is responding correctly. I think this is best tested by using the UI itself. Uh, so, so yeah, there's this React UI function that uh, reacts uh, every time we type a key. Uh, that's where I construct the type, the text that is uh, being displayed uh, at the top, uh, which uh, is the command. The let me just show you what I'm talking about. What is it saying? Oh, because I reverted the code that was printing the e acute, but uh, I still have an e acute in my level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if I type ABC, this ABC at the top is uh, what is being handled by this uh, line here, which adds ordinary characters to the debug command. And I need to handle like space specially because it's apparently considered a special character. It's not represented by the character 42 in Gloss uh, and the backspace character and the enter character to run the debug action. Uh, but most of the time, uh, it's the world uh, which is reacting to, uh, like, but well, so far it's only reacting to uh, the, the arrow keys. Uh, and that's the function that I will be testing. Uh, and there's a display UI function that uh, is a pure function uh, from the UI state to a value of that picture, which Gloss displays. And that, that's my game. That, that's the, the outermost loop. Uh, in the future here, there's a function which takes uh, the amount of seconds that have elapsed since the last uh, time we updated. So it should be called 30 times a second. And that's how I will be able to gradually update this state to do animations. Anyway, uh, today I want to do tests. So uh, a test is some monadic block that has access to the world, so we'll be able to uh, say things like, please add this rule to the rule set. I should show you what the world looks like. It's uh, uh, It holds a level, so just like the grid of where all of the characters are, and a list of rules that are active. Uh, should probably be a set. Uh, yeah, let's change it to a set and see what breaks. Uh, the set is not in scope. And port dot, uh, dot set. Uh, I like to import just a set like that. And if needed, import qualify dot, uh, dot set as set. This way, if I have both like set and map in scope, I can write set dot insert for set and map dot insert for map. But I don't have uh, to write 
set.set set and uh, map.map map to refer to the types. Uh, and I cannot use it because set is in containers. And yeah, this is a very tiny window. <laughs> uh, let's depend on containers. I like to keep them sorted. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of stuff that will be broken because I now use a set instead of a list. And indeed, in this very file, uh, I say filter. I probably want set.delete rule from the rules. And 23, a few lines later, instead of adding the rule to the beginning, set.insert. And I need to give rule an ord instance. I also like to keep those shorted, but it's harder. There you go. Uh, and that's it. Apparently, those were all of the changes I needed to make in order to make the code type check with a set instead of a list. Uh, I, I would normally run the game now in order to see if I've broken anything, but I, I, I said I wanted to write some tests. So let's write some tests to see if I've broken anything. Uh, all right. So like I said, a test is a do block, which has access to the state of the world. We can add and remove some rules. We can pretend that the user has typed an arrow key. Uh, and uh, there, it's also possible to fail with an error message saying this test fail, whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's a function to run the test that does pretty much the obvious thing, like prints the error message to the screen if it failed and calls uh, exit failure uh, in order to indicate that the test has failed because that's how we signal to stack test or get out test that the test has failed. Um, and I want to this this check. Yes, that check is uh, the function that uh, tests that the state of the level is as I expect it. So here was a test. I should be running those tests. Uh, is there a way to run them automatically as I change this file? Yes, there is. Uh, I can. Uh, run at my oh, I already had in my list the test uh, as one of the many targets uh, that I want the stack to watch for changes and reload. And so since it will bring into scope all of the definitions from this file, uh, then if I do dash dash test equals, for example, passing test, uh, then uh, every time I change this file, it should run this IO computation. And I think it did run it. It's just there isn't any output in case of success. <laughs> so uh, like if I, but if I break it though, there uh, we see uh, that the test has failed and there is a moderately nice uh, error message. It's not that nice because the, <laughs> the output is uh, so narrow because I, I want to make the font size really big to make sure that we can read everything I'm doing. Uh, but I now realize that this has a, a downside for readability as well. Uh, but uh, it should normally be uh, expected level state colon on the same line and then uh, with a nice indented block uh, a description of the level. And currently the level is like very tiny uh, but I, I could make it bigger like this. And it prints uh, the state of the level. Uh, now it says it's an unexpected level state, but it doesn't say what is the state it expected. Or rather, on the contrary, it, set, it only prints the expected state because we're expecting y, but the current state is x. And in order to debug, it will probably be very helpful 
to be able to compare the expected state to the actual state. So uh, I need to write a function which goes in the opposite direction of a function I have already written um, somewhere. Uh, so here, parse level is a function which parses a representation of the level that uh, has a, a bunch, just a, has a bunch of characters uh, and converts it to the, the more grid-like representation, a slightly more efficient representation that I want to use uh, when running the game. Uh, and well, it's not just for efficiency, it's also because uh, sometimes there's two sprites on top of each other and uh, that's a bit hard to express using a single character <laughs> in this uh, uh, string-based representation. Um, and so th that means there's a limitation, right? When I, I describe the level using a string, I can only have one character per stack, per, per cell. I cannot have characters stack on top of each other. Uh, but now I kind of want to convert the level into that string representation, but the level can have stack sprites. So, uh, well, they have an order, and they, they need to have an order when they are stacked so that I can draw them in the right order. Uh, and so I guess I will simply use the one on top. Uh, sure, I can do that. Um, although, uh, I said... Um, well, not, 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 it's not something I said, it's something I... Well, it's something I did in one of those previous <laughs> work-only streams that uh, you have not scene if you are not working with me and that is uh, these kind of examples uh, right if s is stop and currently uh, w x y and z are all you they're all playable characters uh, if uh, i guess i shouldn't say playable characters because that refers that typically refers to uh, when you're currently playing as one of them but you could be one of the others but like in the way you everything is a playable character you can s always take control of any object you want uh, just a matter of saying the name of object is you uh, but here i'm saying that w x y and z are you if you press a key they will currently move uh, and in that particular configuration if y is stacked on top of s uh, and i press right then z can move to the right Y, even though it is on a thing that is stopped, it can move away from it. So Y will move here, but X cannot move onto the object which is stopped. So I want it to stay here. And since X is not stopped, it does not prevent W from moving on top of W. So I have these diagrams here where uh, I illustrate stacks by drawing stuff on top of each other. So maybe that should be uh, the output uh, that I want to draw. Uh, I, yeah, may, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I will do. So that sounds specific to testing. So I don't think that I want to do that in the same file that I do parse level, but I do want to take some inspiration from this implementation. Um, so before check or well, anywhere, the order of the definitions doesn't matter. Uh, I want a function which will convert a level to a, a list of strings. So I guess pprint level. Uh, and I kind of, yeah, I'm worrying about the, like, I'm, I'm worrying about what if in the future I have a level with more than one row? Won't it be confusing? if I print those stacks. Uh, so I guess I want to print, I want to go to from a level not to a list of strings, that would be like a, a 2D array, but a list of lists of strings uh, so that each row is being uh, displayed as a stack. Uh, like I'll have a stack of rows uh, and I'll be able to put the, the square brackets and the, the commas to distinguish whether I'm talking about a 2D level or a stack of rows. Okay, okay, like this type. So uh, we are 
receiving a level along with everything it contains. Um, and I don't think we'll need everything in that level. Uh, we will only need the level array, I believe. Uh, and I want to produce a list of list of strings. So what if I convert the array to a list? So level array, uh, here it's a local definition, but I, I named it that way uh, so that uh, in parsable, let me show you parsable again. Uh, in parsable, since I use record one cards, uh, a level has a field named level array, which contains an array of lists of entity. Oh, bottom to that, that's that's what I wanted to know, like uh, in, in which order. Uh, so that tells me that uh, I'll need to draw the things that are at the left of the array first and then like remove them or something and then draw everything that is left until there is nothing. Uh, sure, sure, sounds good. Go back. Uh, okay, so um, back, back, no, back, here, uh, here, pretty pretty level. Um, yeah, level that's two array. This gives me. What does this give me? Does array even have a foldable instance? I bet it does, but does it give. Is it the, the foldable instance that I want? Like, I want a list of lists, but this will probably give me like a flat list of all of the elements in the array, isn't it? Let's see. So, array. does have a foldable instance, uh, but precisely because it's a foldable instance and, and the toList method from the foldable uh, type class is from an array of A's to a list of A's, I know that it's giving me a, a flat list already. Uh, but is there maybe elsewhere in this file maybe a dedicated toList? function or maybe I can ask Google for array i a to list well it can't be to, to list of list of a because that's specific to the specific i x that I'm talking about so I don't think I'll be able to use to list at all uh, I think that I will need to uh, use a list comprehension syntax where I will iterate over uh, all of the indices that I care about and then look them up in the array. Uh, okay, okay, no problem. Um, I think there is, if I go back to the file which defines parsable, I think I already defined a helper function for levels that gives me the bounds. Uh, parse level, in bounds, level bounds, there you go. So level bounds of the level, uh, that will give me, what, what will that give me? Level bounds will give me a pair of, I think it will always be like zero, zero, and the max and tree, uh, so the width and the height, uh, um, which I guess I could flip on its head because I want from zero to the width and separately I want from zero to the height. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head of an easy way to uh, transpose tuples, uh, I know how to transpose a nested list of lists, it's a, method, it's a function called transpose, uh, but uh, I guess I will just uh, do some pattern matching, uh, 
yeah, I'm pattern matching on that. And here I will iterate. So the Y coordinate will go, let's see, do I need to go from zero to H or from H to zero? Uh, yes, H is not totally correct. Uh, is the last entry. So if, if the entries are 0, 1, 2, it will be 2, even though there's three entries. So let's call it like Y, Z. I, I like uh, to have 0 for the first thing and Z uh, for the last one. Uh, this way I can use like Y for the, the penultimate entry uh, and 1 for the second entry. Like it, it works in both directions. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I want y to go, yeah, yeah, I need to take, um, so, well, I need to know what's the convention <laughs> used when drawing uh, the level, so uh, do I have a function draw level, yes, and I translate, uh, so in glass, positive y is up, so uh, for each sprite in my grid, I go at the position ij, and how do I compute p, the transformation? Uh, it's some linear transformation of the coordinate. So that means that if the coordinates get bigger, they will be drawn higher on the screen, so that means I want, if I want to print them to the terminal as a, a list with the, the topmost row and then the second, then I need to go from biggest number first to smallest number. So uh, y z, y z minus one, dot dot y zero. Uh, so that's the y coordinate that will allow me to iterate over each row for each row nested with number engine I want to do the same thing for x but this time uh, from left to right uh, x0 to xz and for each of uh, hmm no 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 the the outermost level of nesting for the lists I'm returning are the rows, uh, so the, the y increments, uh, well decrements uh, as we go through the rows, but then uh, for each of those I want a list of uh, layers in the stack, right? Uh, so I think I probably want to convert a regular list. Um, here's what I mean by a regular list. So, so what I wrote, what I've almost wrote here, I should finish writing it like level at, I think I've called the function that allows me to look, no, no, it's called level at. Let's go see other things exist in level bounds. Uh, sprite at takes a level, a cell position. And an entity. So sprite at. It should be sprites at. Because there's more than one that has been returned. Uh, but it's already not compiling, so I don't want to make further changes right now. I remember, I'll rename it to sprites at in a moment. So sprite at, uh, like I said, takes a level and a position, and I've just created a position, uh, the x, y coordinate. I've just computed the one that I care. Okay, so what I've now computed uh, here is a row, but not in the format that I want to print. It's a row that contains all of the information I want to print, but uh, it's a list of lists where each list is a stack. But what I want instead is a list which is itself a stack where each entry is a row. Uh, so I think uh, I should say something like pvprint 
row and do that logic in the helper function. Print row. So that takes a list of list of entities because sprite app returns a list of entities, a stack. And we will return a list of strings, a list, a, a stack of rows. Uh, and it will make more sense to produce them from the bottom up. So I think I want to reverse the resulting list. And if I'm going to do that kind of shenanigans, I might as well call reverse here as well and do the easier thing of going from 0 to yz. All right. Eh, looks good enough. Um, OK, so pretty print of row. Let me just set the undefined for now, because I see that there's some error here that I should probably address. Uh, that was when I was explaining what I wanted. Uh, to here was also when I was explaining what I wanted, and all of that is what I copied, but no longer want to use. Okay, so everything type checks. There's an undefined, uh, which is not being triggered because nothing is calling pprint level yet. Uh, but I want to take the opportunity to rename sprite at to sprites at. What is calling sprite at? Uh, hmm. Right, because I told GHCID to only. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> you can't see the please ask question label above my face. Uh, okay, so. Uh, yes. Uh, it's complaining that sprites at does not exist, even though I just renamed sprite at to sprites at. That's because uh, the command I've been running uh, was telling GHCID to only reload the test files, but uh, this sprite at sprite at function I've just renamed is in source level, so it's in my library. Uh, so let me try to build everything, including the library. Uh, I don't think stack build will build the test. Um, okay, okay, <laughs> it's so hard to read. Let's uh, ask GHCID to do it one at a time. So, how about the library? Does the library. Oh, it's more readable when I put my hands. <laughs> Please ask questions. I am looking at the chat there this time. There, there's no questions. Don't see any questions. Uh, okay, now that's more in line with what I expected. Uh, just needs to rename sprite at two sprites at a couple of times. That's it. That were, those were all the users of sprite at in the library. What about the executable? I think I need to build the giggles is you library before GHCID can, but well, before uh, building the executable can see the library. Uh, if just GHCID was successfully able, successfully able to load the library, like it doesn't count, it doesn't get saved in a way that uh, the code which compiles the executable can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the executable, we have occurrences of sprite at, no, do we not? Oh, that's still because rules is a set. So move view, I was expecting a list, should now take a set. 
but this is in the library. Where was this compiling successfully? I am now very confused. So world uses a set. Move you here. Oh, because move you. Okay, now <laughs> I'll, uh, can I configure it to load everything again? Because I, I want to just make sure everything can pass. So move you was in the library. It was expecting a list and that was compiling. Uh, but in the executable, we were calling it with the field that was a list, but is now a set. So that's why uh, that was now no longer compiling. So, okay, okay, so I want move you to now take a set of rules. Uh, I just want to import the same. Uh, is that that? Where, where did I? In the file which defines world. This is where I imported set. So in rules, I want to import those same things. I like to separate the imports of things from the libraries I depend upon uh, versus things I am defining myself in this project. Uh, so 57. Uh, any is a function on lists, I think. No, on any foldable. Uh, so doesn't set have a foldable instance? Uh, oh, that's not the problem. Is that is you is a function that is called on rules. It's not any that is being called on uh, a set. In fact, it is called on a list because sprites at returns a stack and the order is important for those stacks because it tells me in which order I am drawing the sprites. Uh, but is you is a function that was taking a list and should now be taking a set. Uh, 18, that is this line. Uh, I was recurring over a bunch of entries. Uh, so let's see, how would this be converted to something that involves a set. So I want to know if a particular entity... Okay, so I think I need to do something different. Let's just comment that, that out. So if the entity is object... is an object, because... Uh, I'll show you what an object is. Okay, so... Uh, the stack, right? It's a stack of entities. Each of those entity is either an object with a particular name or a piece of text whose label is that name, right? When I was running, uh, I can't run it right now because it's not compiling, but presumably there's an executable and giggles is you somewhere. Uh, this one. No. I can run. Okay, so uh, it's, it's probably clearer with the bees than with giggles. So uh, this green bee is an object. It's a thing that is named by the name bee. Like I wasn't uh, like in Baba is you in the real game. Like they, they are all they're all images. Like you have the picture of a box, and you have the text box that refers to the box. Uh, that is the closest to here. We have our favorite robot Giggles that is referred to by the name Giggles. Uh, and uh, for, like, I only have two images, Sheets and Giggles, and uh, like, I'm not trying to make a game I can sell. I don't need it to be pretty. Uh, and so uh, th th that's it. I I'm happy with those two images. Everything else uh, is just going to be a green circle with the name of the thing that there should be an image for there. <laughs> so. Uh, it's like worse than programmer art. It's no art at all. Uh, but at least we can distinguish clearly. Like this is the label that refers to objects B, and this is the object B. So 
that's the, that's the difference. Uh, and uh, if I say something like uh, B is U, well, B is already U, because uh, I can move it around, because uh, that's just part of the, the default rules that I, I start the game with uh, for testing. Uh, but uh, notice that the label B here is not moving. Uh, if I want labels to be moving, I, I can't say, at least in Batman is U, I cannot say I want the label B to be moving. I can only say that all the pieces of text are moving. So I can do that by saying may is U uh, text, I think, is special. And now I can move all of the pieces of text. They are moving in a really weird way. Oh, is it because they are stuck? I guess the interaction between things which are stuck and things which are you is suboptimal. So that would be another test to add and then to fix. Because uh, I would expect the, the whole row to move to the right, but instead only the first one is, is doing so. And that, that, that is working fine when things are not stuck. So there's a, a poor interaction there. Uh, and I think it was working before. Hmm, not sure. Um, yeah, so that's what this part of the text of the test is doing here. Uh, if the object is a text, uh, right, because what I was showing you is that every object, if every sprite is either an object, something like a green B, or a text, something like the letter B, uh, and they, they both obey like slightly different rules. And so if I want to ask if the B object is you, uh, then I would check if in the rules there is a name is you object name. If that is, uh, I think it's a member of the rules. Uh, whereas if it's a piece of text, uh, I want to check if, oh, it's not even object name, it's just a string. Uh, I want to check if the text, if the word text, which is like special, uh, is a member of the rules. So that's actually simpler than before, because uh, everything else I think was just trying to recur down the list, and now we don't need to do that. Uh, and same thing for is stuff. Uh, hmm, there's going to be a bit of duplication. Well, there was already a bit of duplication, and I guess there will still be a bit of duplication uh, until I remove the duplication. Uh, maybe now would be a good time to do that. Uh, hmm. Has name is rule. That might be a way uh, to do, eliminate the duplication. So I need the constructor name is you or stop is you. Uh, name is you or name is stop. So that would be something from a name to a rule. Uh, it's a pretty long text signature, I'll put it on a different line. Uh, and the output of all of that is a predicate uh, to check if something is you or something. So it has name is rule, rules, uh, name is rule. Uh, okay, so now we can do the thing I just said. Uh, if it, uh, I just did below for is you, if it's an object, I want this, but instead of name is you, I use name is rule to construct the rule. And then I check if that rule is a member of the rules. And if it's a piece of text, Same thing, name is rule. And now is you. 
That would be slightly better if I put, uh, move the name is rule argument first. Always uh, put the arguments which vary. Um, not which vary. Uh, well, you know what I mean, right? Uh, if I had the previous argument, I would have to write has name is rule rules name is you. Uh, but now that I have swapped the order of the arguments, I am writing them like this, which means that I can eliminate rules. And I'm not a big fan of point three. Uh, unless it really improves readability, and this is one of those times where it at least does not hinder. All right, so 29. Let's set and everything above. Excellent. So. Uh, it's been more than an hour. I'm thinking of wrapping up. I like to have relatively short streaming sessions. Uh, I just want to end on a high note. So if I go back to running the tests, this one. Uh, not source, but test. Uh, if I just finish pprint row, then I think we'll be good. Uh, why am I now getting type errors? I thought I was loading everything in GCID a moment ago. What was I doing instead? I was loading lib, executable, and test. Yeah, I was loading everything. So what's wrong? Couldn't match set rules. Line 21. Well, let's, I don't know why it wasn't cut earlier, but I agree that it should now start with set of empty rules. Uh, and just come to think of it. So should the world, uh, well here this is a list, it should be a set. So I get the impression that uh, despite the fact that I asked uh, GCI to load, uh, not here, here, everything, uh, giggles as you, lib, library, and the executable, and so on, I don't think it actually did that. So let's look at the executable. Yeah, we were looking at that before. So move. Oh, right. <laughs> we need to build uh, the library so that the code which builds executable can see it. Okay. So now. GHCID should see that move rules is taking a set. And indeed, the next error is not on line 38, but on line 91, which is exactly the place where I wanted a type error set that from list. And as usual, if I want to use set, I need, uh, where was it? In, not in the rules. In world, this line. Excellent. So the executable is working. Let's now do the tests. Uh, what's wrong with this line? 
uh, same thing I need to import set and now all of the type errors are fixed I just need to fix my undefined which I am hoping will be pretty short and then I can end the stream uh, so let's see I have a list of stacks boom I want a list of rows uh, boom, boom, boom. The, the bottom one first because uh, it will be reversed uh, it's just because it's easier to get the, the bottom row first so uh, uh, let's see the, the base case right because I will be printing the bottom row and then removing all of those entries from the stack and then I will have shorter stacks so the base case uh, is not uh, as usual when I iterate over a list uh, when I reach the case in which the list is empty but rather the case in which I have a list of empty stacks so if all the stacks are empty null checks if a list is empty uh, so that's uh, uh, the, the row if they're all null in the row then I return an empty list otherwise I return something and I will recur with print row in which I drop the bottom most element of each stack so that we get a bit closer to the state in which they are all null uh, and here I need to print the first element but some of them might be empty I know that they're not all empty uh, but I need to worry about the case in which they are so I, I just I can't just do like head uh, that that's always a bad idea because it's partial uh, but uh, do I have uh, a head may in anything I'm importing not, uh, I'm not currently depending on safe and so on uh, well, list two maybe uh, yeah that's in base um, let's see so I want snap oh I know pretty print stack of the row uh, no I want the first uh, pretty print we'll just call it go just some helper function go that takes a stack I don't think it's worth exposing it at the top level because it's not semantically very meaningful uh, it, if the stack is empty it returns the space character and otherwise if there's at least one entity uh, well the entity as we know is either an object with a particular name or uh, well this is a list followed by something else which we don't care about um, or it's a piece of text is that how I called it object or text yes with a particular name uh, and in parse level I have this convention uh, here that uh, sheets and giggles are treated specially so I think I want uh, the list of special cases to be like all in one spot I don't want to have a function here in parse entity that uh, special cases a few characters and then all the way in the test a uh, piece of code that does the opposite that uh, parses of giggles and converts to g so instead here I think I want uh, like special chars or something that would be a list of pairs of character and uh, the entity that it corresponds to so we have g is special and corresponds to giggles 
uh, more specifically to the object Google. And the convention I'm using is that uh, lowercase letters are the text representation of the same uh, the same object. Uh, so same thing for sheets, uh, object sheets, lowercase s for text sheets. And that's it. No, t is also special. T is the the text text uh, so that we can form sentences such as text is you or text is stop uh, okay uh, so those are the special characters uh, and where is this this is in the library I need to go back and I only build uh, not build it in GCD. Only the library, because I now know that listing more than one target doesn't seem to do anything. Um, okay, so... Uh, oh, and space is nothing. I don't think I'm in danger of misinterpreting that one. Uh, but still, should I still put it in the list of special characters? Pro probably, so in which case... That would be a map to maybe entity. All of those are just. And there's a space that maps to nothing. Okay. So, uh, if I can look up the character. Uh, is it the first or the second argument? Uh, lookup is a function that takes uh, a key and an association list. So if uh, I can look up C in the list of special characters, uh, I guess the opposite would be special entities, which is a list of maybe entity to char obtained by swapping all of the pairs. Because I, I want to be able to do lookups in both directions, and the, the lookup function from base only allows me to interpret the left argument as the key, so that's why I'm defining both. Uh, but I'm defining both in terms of each other so that they cannot get out of sync. Uh, okay, so if I look up the character in special cars, uh, then I want hmm. so I'm trying to use view patterns, but uh, which would be uh, like flip, look up, arrow, and then uh, the thing I'm matching on would be uh, the maybe entity. So, uh, well, just that's the result. Uh, but I said earlier that I don't like uh, to use point freestyle when it makes things less clear. So in this case, flip lookup, what does that mean? Uh, so I think I'll define uh, is special char from char to maybe, maybe <laughs> entity, because if it's found in the map, it would be, we will successfully find the maybe entity, uh, which takes a Character and returns lookup that character in special cars and sp similarly is special entity which takes a maybe entity and returns a maybe car a maybe entity 
when we look up this maybe entity in special entities. Okay, so uh, now I can write is special char and aha, I even had a mistake before. It, it, uh, I didn't think of the doubly nested maybe. Uh, I should have matched on just of R, but now it's much clearer, I think. Special car uh, returns just of maybe entity and we return it if it is one of those. And otherwise, uh, I have this special convention about uh, upper character and lower character, uh, which I guess I should write here as well, right? So uh, parse entity is from a character to a maybe entity, and I guess re render entity or pprint uh, entity from maybe entity to car. Uh, I'm now slightly worried about what if I get a name that is longer than a single character. Uh, hmm. Is special entity just of a character? If it is, then I return that character. Otherwise... What do I do otherwise? Because I still need to handle like the nothing case, in which case I'm just duplicating that logic. Uh, and yeah, I still need to deal with the case in which I have object with a string with more than one character. Uh, maybe it's time to change name to be, yeah, that's, that's gonna be a much bigger change. <laughs> Don't think uh, I want to do that, do that in this stream, maybe next time, uh, but uh, for it to be like a, an algebraic data type, which says it's either like one of the special uh, names I recognize, like giggles and sheets and text, or it's a single character. That, that would make things much safer. Uh, but for now, I guess, uh, I will remove the nothing case because I need to handle it special anyway. And here it's if it's a an entity, yeah. Maybe char. I think that's fine. And here, okay, parse entity. Okay, this maybe means that it was. It doesn't mean that it was not parsed properly. It means that we want a space because uh, we cannot fail to parse a character. Okay, so if it's space, I return the thing. If it's a special character, I return the character. Otherwise, I do the special dance with uh, is upper. Uh, and it, in the other direction, if it's nothing, I return a space. If it's a special entity, I return the character. And if it's an object, I will assume that it only has, it's only one character. And I, I guess I'll, I'll leave that uh, partially, uh, leave this function partial to remind me to do the fix I just mentioned, to uh, improve my data modeling, to make the impossible cases unrepresentable. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, if, if I reach one of these lines, I expect that there will be only a single character, in which case I return it. And I need to enable a few patterns to use this Syntax. Oh, oh, comments. Thanks for the stream. There's a list to maybe in days. Uh, indeed, there is. Uh, yeah, I've asked this question a while ago. I should have paid more attention to the chat. 
like I, ha I have it right here, but uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the code. <laughs> I, should, I should I should put it here, <laughs> but it, it doesn't it doesn't stay. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, thirty five. What's wrong with that? Uh, so it isn't adaptable. And that's no longer a maybe entity, it's just an entity. So just of entity. Something here, it's an entity. case of just of a special entity, same thing, same thing for the other two cases. All right, now we only have the warning that I expected because I'm only uh, handling strings of length one, uh, except for those which are special. Cool! Uh, so after all of that, I can finally go back the test. I'm way over. I wanted to stick to one hour. Uh, and uh, in the pretty print roll. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this is the place where I could uh, use list to maybe as recommended in the chat. Uh, so what does it do? It returns nothing on an empty list or just a. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Uh, so let's map list to maybe. It's just the first element, right? First element, yep. Uh, and pprint entity, which I think I've just implemented, haven't I? Yes, I have! Cool! So I think uh, it's not in scope. Where have I defined it? In level. So I need to import level. I already imported level. Is it again that I need to build the library before it's visible to the tests or the executable? Maybe is in data the maybe not the data list, okay? All right, the test runs. Uh, it complains about something. I haven't even called the code. Uh, so yeah, in my error message. I probably wanted to say something like, uh, here's what I expected, and here's what I got. slightly concerned about the fact that I will now have list of list of lists instead of just a list of streams. I guess when I pretty print them, it doesn't matter that much which ones are rows and which ones are stacks, because uh, I'll be able to look at the code. Uh, it's not ideal, but uh, yeah, 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 let's just write concat. I'm getting a list of list of strings and uh, oh parse level is not oh but I don't want the parse level I want to do the opposite right I want to uh, take the level array and pretty print the level 
and check that it's the same as the stream level I have received. Uh, in which case, I want to print uh, something else. So I expected the stream level and I got what I pretty printed. So ex just expected. And actual is pretty print level. So unless the actual is expected, print the error message that prints both of them in the same way by concatenating the expected and the actual. Doesn't type check. Uh, could match expected type level tag in printing the whole level. And 68, I now need to describe a list of list of tags. No, yeah, yeah, a list of rows. Each row is a list of stack, yeah. Uh, so that's what I want. Take. Great. And if I ask for the thing I have, oh, it still fails. <laughs> Darn. How, how come it fails? <laughs> well, I guess we'll figure out next time. I, I think that's like a good time to end the stream. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Ciao.